is the statement, every ham station should be grounded, a myth? Yes. And no. Well, we have a two-part answer because grounding means different things. First, yes, your station should be grounded, but it probably already is. You don't have to do anything unless you have a a boat anchor ham shack. In other words, older gear that does not have a three-prong power plug. That third prong, the round one, is an electrical safety ground and is tied to the power company ground at the service entrance. Keeps you from getting shocked. So, yeah, uh, you should have an electrical ground to avoid being electrocuted. Now, the no part. No, you don't need a ground. That's a so-called RF ground, a ground rod driven into the ground just outside the shack. That might do nothing except possibly set you up for having all your gear destroyed by a lightning strike. Uh, More on that later in this video. Presumably, having a ground rod outside the shack is to cure RF in the shack problems. Draining off to ground, unwanted RF floating around, giving you RF burns, making the transceiver act erratic, and so on, other mysterious problems. If you have those issues, it is because of a problem with your antenna system. Fix the antenna system, and you should be able to mostly eliminate unwanted RF. Say you have a coax feed line connected directly to a dipole antenna. Well, you're likely going to have a separate current flowing on the outside of the coax shield called common mode current. That gives you unwanted RF problems. The solution is to use a common mode choke at the antenna feed point. Now, here's one type marketed by Palomar engineers. Just some... Furite snap-on chokes at the antenna feed point to choke off the unwanted common mode current. Keeps it from flowing down the coax shield into your shack. You can make a coax RF choke yourself. Well, what if you have an unbalanced antenna system like an N-fed wire? Well, if you buy one, uh, follow the instructions, and I would suggest a common mode choke at least before the coax comes into the house. Those antennas can work very well, but they're known for RF in the shack problems. Well, what if you do all that? You still have other unwanted RF problems. Well, the answer could be snap on RF chokes. Put them on every cable in your shack. You can buy a kit like this, also from Palomar Engineers. So, here's a a transceiver choke kit they sell. You see they've got a snap-on choke on just about everything. Here's a big old choke on the coax cable. Another one here, another one here, another one here. Even on the uh, DC power cord, uh, there's an RF choke. Well, what if you do all that, but then when you key your transmitter, the garage door opens. Well, they have snap-on kits for that too. So you get the idea. Now, I have no affiliation with Palomar Engineers, just a website where I know you can get that stuff. Now, you can buy snap-on chokes for a lot less money on Amazon, but they're probably from China, and I can't say if they're any good. So, with proper antenna system design and use of chokes, you should be able to deal with unwanted RF problems. Now, back to the idea of a ground rod outside the shack. That's only necessary if it's part of a lightning protection system. Now, I emphasize part because there is a lot more to it than having one ground rod and all your stuff connected to it. Let's examine the mistake a lot of hams make setting themselves up for having all their gear wiped out by lightning. This is the excellent 
website of Tom Rausch, uh, W8JI. Now here, we have a typical ham installation. E represents the power lines, D the service panel entrance, and C uh, the ground rod at the service panel entrance. This cable here represents the uh, power, the AC power wiring in your house. Here's your radio station. And right outside the shack, you've driven a ground rod, B, which is connected to the radios. And here we have a coax cable going out to your antenna. Now let's look to see what happens if you have a lightning strike on the power lines. In this drawing, we see uh, the power lines, E, being struck by lightning. So what happens? Well, the uh, lightning travels on down the power line uh, to your house. It finds the service entrance and it says, oh, let's, let's go in here. It finds this service entrance ground. Some of it goes down here. But then it says, uh, wait, I detect another ground rod someplace on this guy's property. This must be a ham radio operator. Let's go destroy his radio station. So the uh, lightning will now travel along the house wiring right through your radio so you know what happens to that. And it finds B, the shack ground. So it goes down here and then it says, oh wait, I think there's yet another ground rod. Uh, so it goes down your coax out to the, uh, let's say this is a tower, and there's your uh, ground rod at your tower. Some of it goes down there, and then it's going to go up here. Say, oh, let's see what we can wreck up here. So uh, what should we do? Well, note uh, what is missing between B and C. They are not bonded together by a low impedance, low resistance connection. Note this, what uh, Tom says here, B and C should always be bonded together. And can we see why? Just imagine having hundreds of amps surging through your house wiring because it detects that there is another entrance to ground someplace on your property. Now, it's also a code violation not to have those separate ground rods bonded together. Now, there is a lot more to an effective lightning protection system. Study Tom's website for the rest of it. The ARRL also has a three-part series on lightning protection, which you can download. Well, why not just disconnect all your gear when threatened by lightning? Well, that would work, but that's disconnecting every cable from your gear. Now, here's why from a discussion page on Stack Exchange. All right, note this conversation here. The surest way to protect your radio gear is to disconnect it from power, from the antenna, from your computer, and even from ground. And even that is no guarantee. A while back, I had an enormous bolt of lightning strike my backyard. I had three transceivers. One rig was still connected to my computer, and both the computer and rig were smoldering. The other two rigs were also fried despite being disconnected from power and antenna. My presumption is that the electromagnetic field from the lightning was powerful enough to, to destroy components in the rigs. It's a hassle, but disconnect your rigs from power, antenna, and computer. Now, there's a comment on that statement. It's worth 
uh, underscoring, that's this section right here, it's worth underscoring that in order for this solution to work, every cable must be disconnected. Feed line, power, Ethernet, any so-called RF ground, so forth, everything. Most likely your rig was toasted by current from the strike if it hit the antenna traveling down the feed line to the chassis of your radio through the ground of your PC interface to the computer to the electrical service ground. Well, what about those little, you know, lightning arresters you can buy? A direct lightning strike can produce 100,000 amps. Do you think one of those little things is going to protect your gear? Well, time to sum all this up. RF ground, a lot of highly educated hams say there really is no such thing. It's a myth. Fix your antenna system. Use balance, RF, snap-on chokes, and so on. Concerning lightning protection, doing it right is going to take some effort and some knowledgeable hams say if you don't do it all, it's better to do nothing. So if that's going to be the case, you know, I'm not going to do all that work. But the only sure protection is to disconnect every cable from all your stuff. Pain in the neck. But really, the only effective alternative is to install a complete lightning protection system. Now, some hams will say there's no way to protect your station from lightning. Why do you think commercial broadcasters with huge towers survive lightning strikes? Now, W8JI Tom has multiple towers, which he says have been struck by lightning hundreds of times with no damage to his electronics. It can be done. Consider subscribing to this channel and 73.